Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Pride Month continues across the country. There's been lots to celebrate, but Pride is not just a party. Pride is a time to acknowledge ongoing discrimination faced by the 2S LGBTQ1A plus community. The workplace continues to be a place where people are facing barriers. Jade Pichette is the Director of Programs for Pride at Work, and Jade could elaborate on the big picture. Hey, good morning, Jade. Hi, welcome. Uh, lovely to be with you. Um, I'm coming in uh, from Toronto, and I'm currently on a uh, background that says celebrating everyone with pride flags of a number of different types, uh, and I'm a blonde femme wearing glasses. It's a really beautiful background, and thank you for taking the time to offer up that description. It almost makes me feel guilty that I don't do a description of myself every day. If I was to do a description this morning, I would have to explain to the audience that I'm very much unshaven because I slept in this morning. Uh, Jade, it's getting, getting, <laughs> getting over to the serious business here. What is the landscape facing people from the 2S LGBTQA IA plus community in the workplace? Well, we've certainly seen some advancements over the last uh, decade and more, um, where we've seen legal protections come into the play uh, in Canada. Uh, since 2018, we've had legal protections for gender identity and gender expression as well. Um, and uh, that has become national in scope. Uh, however, we're still seeing quite a lot of challenges in the workplace uh, uh, for uh, instance, in terms of income, uh, we see that heterosexual men make about 56,000 a year in Canada, while as gay men make about 51, lesbian women make about 45, heterosexual women about 40. So you see the, the gender gap there. Uh, but bisexual men actually make less than that at 31, and bisexual women make less than half of what a straight man would make in Canada at 25,000. So we're seeing still some serious disparities uh, for the community. How much of that disparity ends up being about the ability to get progression in a workplace, not simply getting the foot in the door, which is something that's so understandable or commonplace mm -hmm. from a disability perspective, but maybe not even getting that opportunity to progress or advance in a workplace as time goes on? Yeah, the, the ability to advance is a, a big part of it. As we know, a lot of how you uh, are manage to advance in your career is about who you know and uh, the opportunities that you have. So if you're either hiding who you are so you don't feel comfortable going to the uh, you know, the smoozing events, the networking events, um, either you just don't get invited out um, to build that network um, and you're not necessarily going to have the same opportunities to uh, advance. We actually have research that's coming out on Monday, which is very exciting, um, called Lead with Pride that will be available on our website, prideatwork.ca, um, that will actually talk about this and talk about how mentorship, um, and sponsorship, which for those who don't know, is the idea of not just supporting somebody in their journey, but actively advocating for them in that journey, um, really are some of the key things that uh, 2S LGBTQIA plus communities are often lacking um, because of our identities. You mentioned the research that's dropping next week, and that is really exciting, but you've also got the Pro Pride Leadership Program as an ongoing program this month, next month, and even starting last month. How is that program aiming to address some of those issues? So Pro Pride is one of our national series of events. Um, and so we try to do events in a number of cities across Canada. Um, we just had an event in Winnipeg. Uh, we're coming up on Toronto next week, Victoria the week after, St. John's next month, Montreal after that. Um, and it will keep going throughout the year uh, because Pride isn't just June uh, for us. And uh, with those events, we're really trying to not just discuss and address uh, address some of the challenges for the community, but provide solutions and provide networking opportunities for community members to really build that, those networks of theirs um, and make that change that they're looking for in their careers. 
I noticed there's a combination of both those networking events as well as some information sessions. There's webinars, there's hybrid, there's English, there's French. It's really a wide, a wide array of different events happening. But what are some of the big topics or big ideas that are going to be explored in these sessions? Well, leadership is the the name of the game right now um, uh, in terms of how do we look at advancement. But another major topic that is coming up right now is the challenge uh, for our communities globally. Um, and so we are seeing a rise of hate um, across the world, including here in Canada. In fact, uh, in a Gal study that just came out uh, showed that within the first three months of 2020, Three, there were over 6,400 uh, 6, um, instances of anti gay, anti trans um, uh, violence. Um, and that was through uh, a series of, of collection methods, including protests, including um, uh, uh, online uh, violence. Um, and so we're, we're seeing that happening here and around the world. And of course, in the States right now, we are seeing anti-trans, uh, anti-drag legislation sweeping mm. across quite a number of states. And in places like Uganda, we're seeing the recriminalization of LGBTQ life. Um, and so uh, now in Uganda, you can go to jail just for being a member of the community, which is a slip back um, from where they were before. Before. And so we're starting to see this hatred happen across the world. And so that is something that is also something that we're talking about quite a lot. It's, it's one of the unfortunate, difficult realities that progress, unfortunately, is not always linear. Fighting for inclusion is a struggle by its nature. If you were to map out, and I, I know this is a big, almost unfair question, but if you were to map out a roadmap for the next 15 years, where are some areas of progression where you'd really like to see a focus? What are some of the things that you would like people to be allies for in advocacy over the course of the next 10 to 15 years? Well, I think we have a huge opportunity within um, corporate Canada and within large employers. Uh, historically, there have been opportunities for large employers to support the community and step up for the community. And right now, what we're seeing is a fallback in that uh, responsibility. Um, and so there have been situations where uh, organizations being 2S LGBTQIA plus inclusive actually results in governmental change, in social change, um, in community change. And there's organizations like the uh, uh, Partnership uh, for LGBTI Equality, um, that's a global partnership that's trying to do that. Um, but there's a lot more work to do. And so we're starting to see some of this um, workplace uh, needs. But I would also add that you know, in Canada, we have gotten certain legal protections, but we need to see those actually implemented. We need to see the protections happening um, in real time. And that's really where we're at now is just making sure that we don't slide backwards um, from how far we've come and that we're supporting people in other parts of the world in their progression. Um, and we can't be we can't uh, forget that we are global citizens at the end of the day. Jade, you mentioned that Pride goes well beyond just the month of June. The work continues all year, all year round for you and your colleagues and for allies all over the country and all over the world. So one of the things that keeps you busy beyond your work in as, as director of programs at Pride of Work, you're also a podcaster. You host a show yes. or co-host a show <laughs> called the Uncovering Belonging Podcast. Why did you want to be a part of that? Why, why did you want to explore the world of podcasting? Uh, it was just another form of media, as as we know, uh, Canadians love our podcasts. So uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of Canadians are our podcast listeners, and so it was another way to get the the word out there. Um, but with that podcast in particular, I mean, the reason why we chose the theme was because really what we're all striving for is to belong. That, that is something that all of us feel at the end of the day is really what we are searching for. And people find belongingness in many different places, in, in many different situations. Certainly, we want to see that at, in the workplace as well. Um, but it was really this idea that 
at, at the end of the day, we're all human and we're all searching for our ability to belong. And if we are able to explore that by exploring how people have gotten to their place of feeling like they belong, then that might provide some solutions for others as well in their journey to find where they belong. Jade, I know it's a busy time for you and your colleagues, especially this month. Thank you for making a little time to chat with me this morning and all the best with the, uh, the ongoing sessions here. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be uh, a busy summer for you and your colleagues. It certainly will, but uh, happy to be here and happy Pride. That's Jade Pichette, Director of Programs for Pride at Work. You can learn more by visiting prideatwork.ca. That's prideatwork.ca. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.